Okay, so, yeah, I stumbled upon this, right? They, you know what I mean? I was actually waiting for something to come in from a PR agency, which still hasn't. So, But I just stumbled upon this one, right? It is called If You Were The Last. It's not necessarily a new film. It did drop to the end of last year. But I was like, you know what? I like the actors. I'm going to give it a look, right? So it is directed by Christine Mercado, written by Angela Bosasa. Uh, the film is produced by John Levin, Dennis Massal, Andrew Miano, Gabriel Nadig, uh, Dan Balgan, uh, Jasmine Bergham, Cara Duret, uh, Britta Rowings, and Sean Woods. It's executive produced by Chris Wetz, Paul Wetz, uh, who else have we got? Harrison Hoffman, Will Greenfield, and Angela Bursasa. It is co-produced by Mandy Reno. Um, stop motion production from Mariela Ramos Oquendo. So Christopher Beer Bear handled the music. Alex Dissenhoff was on cinematography. Henry Hayes edits the piece. Christopher Stuhl is production design. Art direction is Al Martin Dwyer and Julia Y. Lau. Uh, Abby Jacobson and Coco Pellisla is set decoration. Costume design is Yulin Colette Hoofkuki. Uh, hair makeup. We got Nicole Ooten, Nicole Ina, Lynn Marie Hackbart, Alana J. Hug, Ashley Kent, Jessica Masters, and Molly O'Neill. So our cast, and it's not a huge one, but it's a good one, right? We have got Adam Garrity, played by Anthony Mackie. Um... His wife, Samantha Garrity, is played by Natalie Morales, who was in Self-Reliance that we looked at last week. And, right, which I didn't even realise, she directed Language Lessons, right? We looked at that, I think it was last year, may have been the year before. It was a great little film that she did with uh, Mark Duplass, right? Um, yeah, anyway, so... Adam's colleague, right, fellow astronaut, is Jane Chung, played by Zoe Chow, right? Zoe's husband, Tom Wright, is played by Jeff Stutz. Stutz. Um, they do have a third astronaut colleague, Megan Benson, played by Missy Pyle. Throughout the film... We do get, we just hear the name Benson, right? But then you learn it's Megan, okay? There's Laura, played by Sarah Vault. Uh, Madame President is played by Kalika. Um, the NASA spokesperson is played by Jess, J, uh, Jason Bale. Right, we've got a couple of reporters played by Andrew, Andrew Farrier and Taylor Schutz. Um, another NASA administrator played by Langston Fishburne. Um, our nurse is played by Jasmine Bergham. Uh, the voice of the computer is Angelica Agaliz. Right. I think that's mainly it. That's mainly our the, the majority of the, the people that we meet. 
Right. Now the gist of the story, adrift in their broken down space shuttle with little hope of rescue, two astronauts argue over whether they're better off spending their remaining days as friends or something more. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. Right. Now, this film. It's very, it's an odd one, right? It's an odd one. Now, special effects wise, right? You know, you, you look at this and you'd be like, wait, what's happening here? You know what I mean? I, I see better special effects in the 48 hour sci-fi London film challenge, right? And that's not a this, what I mean is, in 48 hours, right, I've seen these filmmakers do incredible things with effects, so you watch this, and at first, you're like, yo, does, what's up with the background, right, is that cardboard, <laughs> right, you look at it, and you're scratching your head a little bit, right, there, there is, um, the credit se opening credit sequence did remind me of Button Moon. <laughs> now, if anyone grew up in the 80s in the UK, they will know what the fuck Button Moon is, right? <laughs> and it reminded me of that, which was a little blast from the past. But, I think, mean, as the film goes on, you, you the, 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 the effects and everything... It's just kind of quirky, right? It's not jarring because they're not really taking it too seriously, you know? Like, there are certain things which you kind of feel, mm, you know what I mean? Because it's sci-fi, right? And it's one of those things where a lot of times with sci-fi, the... The imagination is the thing that drives the exploration. Meaning, we're only going to see what someone can actually envision, right? So, whether it's a new type of communication, a new style of spaceship, all of those things, it's down to the imagination of the people making the film, you know? And so, when they're dealing with music... And we've got, a, a, a cent they're kind of like SNES cartridges, right? I feel it's the SNES, maybe it's the NES, right? I didn't want to, I never had one, but I, one of them had the cartridges, right? Which is the crazy story of how the PlayStation came to be. But, the, yeah, the cassettes kind of reminded you of that. And their videos, and you kind of feel, I mean, we could have done a little bit better on that. And especially when it came to, I thought the music choices and the film choices were a little bit stayed. You know, it, it kind of feels sometimes that people always just want to mention certain films. You know what I mean? It, it's just like, oh... At a pinch, right? You want something romantic and it's Casablanca. You know what I mean? Or, oh, let's talk Princess Bride. And it's just like, ah, I mean, I haven't seen Casablanca. But Princess Bride, of course Princess Bride is great. But there are other great films. Why don't we mention some other things? Like, let's change it up a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, with the music, I like Lionel Richie. There's other songs. There's other great artists. You know. Right. Jane likes Justin Bieber. There are other artists. Like. So on that run. I was a bit like. Argh. But I did like the alien situation. Right. That. Yeah. That I, I enjoyed. Because the first film. The first film is fuck cruise man. It really is. It's just like. Yo. Don't watch that at night. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so what's really great though about this film is it's the chemistry 
Right, and we know Anthony Mackie, who is all over the place, right? Old Mackie, you know what I mean? He's been in so many things, and he kills it, right? Kills it in, in whatever he seems to throw himself into. He's, he's a fucking good actor, you know what I mean? So we know he's good, right? And we know Zoe Chow is good. Right, she is great. I mean, the after party. I mean, it's that was so just. Oh, oh my days, right? Oh my days. You you watch that uh, series and she just kills it, and then just you know all the other things she's been in. So we know they're good actors. But their chemistry together is great. And then it's the way the subject is approached, right? Because it could have been this whole, whole glances. But it's a very matter-of-fact thing. And you do feel, you know what I mean? You're astronauts, right? So you're not dumb people. Right, when you learn, like, I think back in the day, probably the criteria to be an astronaut was a bit less. Now, you have to know all these languages and all this other shit. So, they're smart people. That doesn't mean to say they're good, you know what I mean, on a personal level, that they can communicate well and all of that. But, you do feel that when it comes to something like this, the conversation is going to be a bit more prag. It would be a bit more pragmatic. And that's what we get. So you're like, okay, yeah, I get it. And then what we see as the breakthrough completely makes sense. Completely makes sense. Because that it is a thing, right? It is a thing, right? Flesh to flesh contact is a thing. So, all of that makes sense, right? And I think it's done well. I mean, the the thing that starts the initial conversation was just like, I trod in something by the chickens? I was just like, yo, come on. Like, I ain't in front of chickens. I ain't doing that shit. What are you doing? You know what I mean? I fuck. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, right? Maybe Adam is an exhibitionist and he needs people watching, but in front of chickens. Yeah. It's just not. That's not happening. But anyway, anyway, I really did like. The the visuals of the re-entry. And, you know, we, we get this, like, little cardboard ship. All of that. But then it's the kind of transformation. Right? And we kind of get... When you look at the visuals, you've got the spaceship. Then living rooms. And that kind of merging of... I thought that was interesting. You know? Because it is. It's these two lives which were separate. Now coming back together. You know? So that was good. And then it it did give a good amount of time for them on Earth. And I think that's interesting. Right? The other stuff is 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 fine and it makes you think, right? It makes you think of those questions. Like what would you do? You know what I mean? Like it, in a situation like that. Now, obviously, you don't have to be a national, but what if there's a cave in? You know what I mean? And you're thinking no one's they're not going to save us. Right? What if you're on a plane and it looks like it might be crashing? You know, and you're sitting next to someone, you've been talking to them for the flight and then, you know, there's been a good rapport and you're like, "Fuck, we might die." Should we? 
right? So you think, I think it makes you ponder those kind of things, which is interesting. But yeah, it's the depiction on Earth, which I think was very interesting and handled pretty well. I I did enjoy it. You know, you kind of know, you know where it's going from the start, right? It, it's not this, you know, what I mean? like, oh man, that really shocked me. That was, I've never seen this. No, we've seen it. We've seen it. But it's still interesting. I think it was still done well. And it is the, it's the feature directorial debut yeah, it's the feature de- director debut from Christine Machado. And I believe it's also the... Because she's done a lot of... She's directed a lot of comedy stand-up specials, right? From a lot of people I really enjoy, like Taylor Tomlinson, Michael Che, Sam Jay, right? Some great comedians. She's done their specials, right? And Angela Barassa. Who wrote it. I believe this is also her feature writing debut. So I think from people where this is their first feature. I think it plays well. I think it shows a lot of promise. You know I think they handled things well. You know what I mean? The the as I said, they got this chemistry. I thought the dialogue was pretty decent. All of those kind of things. Right? It would be interesting to know about those choices for the effects and everything. Because as I said, it's like the tattoos. At first I'm like, what the fuck? But then you're like, I get it. I do get it, right? Obviously, it makes all the, all the sense. All the sense in the world. Right? All the goofing with Benson. All of these things actually do make sense. They're quirky, they're weird, they're odd. But it all makes sense when you think about the situation. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. I, I would definitely recommend if you were the last. You know? And it, it kind of plays to the crowd who might watch um, Self-Reliance, you know, Quiz Lady. I do think it's a better film, you know? I do think it's a better film, right? It's kind of that quirky thing, a bit like fingernails or shortcomings, you know what I mean? Um... Yeah, it's just got that oddball charm of something like um, Juno, Garden State, Eternal Sunshine. It's a it's a very good film. So yeah, if you're looking for something something light, right? Not too heavy, but interesting, amusing, will make you smile. I don't think you will go wrong. Right? I do not think you will go wrong with if you were the last.